1964, Japan introduced the world's first bullet train called the Shinkansen. It traveled 67 miles from Tokyo to Osaka at a record-breaking 130 miles per hour. Today, Japan's latest bullet trains can reach almost 200 miles per hour. And they're not the only country to reach these high speeds. China boasts the fastest and largest high-speed rail network in the world. It stretches over 19,000 miles and has trains that run over 250 miles per hour. Spain began constructing its own high-speed rail network in 1992 and now operates the largest high-speed rail network in Europe with over 2,000 miles of track, including a line that can travel from Madrid to Barcelona in less than three hours. In the US, has nothing that's remotely competitive. But recently, this looks to be changing. Right now, the California High-Speed Rail Authority is overseeing a high-speed line that aims to carry passengers from San Francisco to Los Angeles in under three hours. The first phase of construction is expected to be completed by 2033. But there has been little progress on a high-speed line for the most densely populated part of the country, the Northeast. Seeing how far we lag behind the rest of the world, there is renewed interest in a decades-old proposal for a 200 miles per hour high-speed line that can take passengers from Boston to New York City in 100 minutes. That's less than half the time it takes Amtrak's fastest train. On March 31st, 2021, President Joe Biden unveiled his $2 trillion plan for improving the nation's infrastructure, and many hoped that part of his plan would help fund construction for the new high-speed line. Okay, so this video isn't about why the US doesn't have a high-speed rail. But to briefly explain, it's due to a couple reasons. First, the rise of car culture diverted interest from rails and towards highways. Second, strong property rights surrounding railways make it hard for companies to build more tracks, let alone for newer, high-speed trains that run on electricity. Then there's population density. Oh, and funding has always been an issue, because everything boils down to money. But this doesn't mean the US hasn't tried to make high-speed rails a thing. Amtrak's Acela Express trains are capable of hitting 150 miles per hour, but they generally hit about 65 miles per hour. And that's due to old tracks and an overall aging infrastructure. A high-speed rail in the American Northeast was looking to be impossible if it relied on existing infrastructure. Ours is the country that uh, built the transcontinental railroad, the interstate highway system. But I think somewhere along the way, we forgot how to think big and act big when it comes to infrastructure. So in 2004, former president of the New York City-based Regional Plan Association, Robert Yarrow, started a studio project at the University of Pennsylvania. He and his students identified 11 clusters of large and small cities called mega regions that stretched 300 to 600 miles across and shared infrastructure and economies. The problem was that these mega regions were either too big to travel by car or too small to be served by plane. It seemed that the best option was high-speed rail. Yarrow and fellow advisor Christopher Bergstrom urged Congress to include funds for a high-speed rail in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, passed in 2009. Congress distributed $10 billion in seed money for high-speed rail. But several of these ARRA high-speed projects became overshadowed by partisan politics and billions of dollars were returned to separate, unrelated grants instead. Eight years later, Yarrow convened another project studio at the university. His graduate students proposed a high-speed rail for the 457-mile run between Boston and Washington, D.C. that included a tunnel through the Long Island Sound and an inland rail through Hartford, Connecticut. This was the launch of a private initiative for an all-new high-speed North Atlantic rail network. The project centerpiece is a high-speed line from New York to Boston that travels underneath the Long Island Sound via a 16-mile tunnel from Long Island to New Haven and then heads north to Hartford. From there, it would travel east to make a stop in Tolland and then move onwards to Providence and stop at Boston. With electric locomotives that could top speeds of 200 miles per hour, this line would potentially shave over two hours off current schedules. Yarrow presented the new initiative in 2017. 
and all systems seemed good to go. But there were two glaring obstacles, the 20-year construction period and the $105 billion price tag. There are other rather expensive American high-speed rail proposals in the works, like one from Dallas to Houston, which is estimated to cost $20 billion. Then there's California's LA to SF bullet train, which is currently under construction, with the price that has risen to $80 billion from its original $37 billion budget, or even the Cascadia project in the Pacific Northwest. But none of these compare to the hefty $105 billion cost of the North Atlantic Rail. Even with Biden's support for Yarrow's North Atlantic Rail proposal in 2017, the initiative ultimately fell through the cracks and the project was considered dead. President Biden has long since been an advocate for improving the nation's infrastructure. On March 31st, 2021, he revealed part one of his latest two-part American jobs plan, a proposal for a roughly $2 trillion infrastructure overhaul bill. American jobs plan will build new rail corridors and transit lines, easing congestion, cutting pollution, slashing commute time, and opening up investment in communities that became connected to the cities and cities to the outskirts, where a lot of jobs are these days. Part of the first plan aims to revitalize the nation's transportation infrastructure by dedicating $621 billion towards improving things like bridges, roads, and public transit. There was hope that this would help fund North Atlantic Rail construction, but so far, that doesn't look to be the case. Of the allocated $621 billion from Biden's latest proposal, $85 billion is said to be invested in modernizing existing transit structures, and another $80 billion to address Amtrak's Northeast Corridor Line from Boston to Washington, D.C. But what's missing is funds for the all-new high-speed rail connecting the Northeast. The hefty price tag is one thing, but some fear building a massive tunnel underground could disrupt wildlife and habitats. This area isn't unfamiliar with proposals for similar infrastructure. New pipeline construction has consistently been delayed because of the environmental concerns involved. People argue that the focus should instead be on improving New York's Hudson Tunnel and other existing tracks between the city and New Haven. So what does this mean for the newest North Atlantic Rail proposal? Well, the goal now is to secure the $105 billion for the 20-year construction period from Congress. Some are skeptical about just how much Congress will support the initiative. Congress has frequently been hesitant to fund Amtrak, let alone a new, expensive, high-speed underground rail. The initiative is set to be presented to two key House committees, Ways and Means and Appropriations, both of which are headed by officials whose districts will be served by North Atlantic Rail. The U.S. has always lagged behind more than two dozen countries in building anything resembling high speed, and the North Atlantic Rail's 20-year construction period sounds like a long time to wait, and it is a long time. But the first steps toward building the high-speed rail network can be started in the next year or two, with improvements on existing lines from New Haven to New York. And from there, the rest of the 20-year plan would allow for a world-class high-speed rail. Dozens of countries have done it. We're not breaking new ground, we're catching up. And if we want to be competitive in the 21st century, we have to be aggressive and bold when it comes to 21st century green infrastructure. The Northeast is already a dense region with the high rail ridership. Some say it's the perfect time to invest in more. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know if you think it's time for an all new high speed rail in the US in the comment section below. And don't forget to click subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. See you next time.